Hello everyone, this is Tatiana Pasharic for CalvinAir.com and we are here at Star World Hotel for the APT Macau 2012 Main Event Day 2. The day kicked off with the awarding of the add-on for charity side event won by Katsuhiro Muto of Japan, giving away more than 10,000 US dollars to the Holy House of Mercy Macau. And if yesterday was about surviving, today is when the serious minds come out to play. Different strategies are laid out as we speak to the chip leader, Daniel Laidlow from Australia, ranked second starting today, and Martin Nielsen, who recently took down the APT Goa. How it's going for them so far? Current chip leader, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm a little tilted right now because I lost a third of my stack uh, like the last minute before the break, making a good play that didn't work out. So I may not actually be current chip leader right now, but I was coming in. Still a decent stack? Still a decent stack, still got 60k, yeah. Having so many chips though, being the chip leader here, what is your strategy? Uh, it's mostly to win a lot of small pots, um, pick on the weaker players and use position against the stronger players. Yeah, it's been a good day. I got um, won a big pot from the guy who was uh, the chip leader after day one. I got pocket A-sets and he had pocket tens and it was a big pot. And what is your strategy now when you have all these chips at the table? I'm not sure, just wait for good spots and good cards and see what happens. And of course, where do the monster stacks come from? The baby stacks. Jay, short stack. I, I was. I am still short stack, but I managed to win a little bit back. So pretty pumped and excited. It's been a really tough challenge, but I'm really playing my short stack A game. So anything happening here is a bonus. What is a short stack A game? Well, being very, very patient and tight, and um, basically you have to have the discipline to fold when you know you're behind. Like I've been folding a lot of pocket pairs. I've been folding a lot of king jacks and really tempting hands that you you know it's so hard to fold but I'm so disciplined and I'm patient and I've doubled up uh, one time and I took down a big pot just then so I'm pretty happy. All right William how's it going? Um, it's going not exactly good not exactly bad because I'm still in and half of the field's gone but I only have 8,000 chips and it's coming back to 400 800 and we all know you can't really do much with 10 big blinds other than hope for a big hand so got the fingers crossed. So that's the only strategy is to shove until something happens? Yeah, exactly. Find something shovable and shove it in. Meanwhile, Kenny Wong, who came in the middle of the pack on day two, also shared with us how one's table draw can affect his gameplay. At this time of the tournament, having an above average stack, what would be the strategy to play? At my table, I'm probably going to play pretty solid. I uh, can't do much. Everyone's pretty aggressive, so uh, my strategy is just to stay above average or around average and grind it up because I've been getting really tough table draws. I got a tough first table draw like Nam was on it, uh, William Reynolds and a few other tough players and I got another tough table draw today and it's been working out though so yeah I'm happy with it. The battle of the minds continues as the players go deep into day two, but the peak of the pressure is upon us tomorrow as we reach the bubble on day three. So stay tuned. This is Tatiana Pasalic. Thank you for watching CalvinAir.com.